What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here today with the week's hottest topics. This is number 39, I believe, you guys. If not, it'll be correct in the, you know, the description bar and across the screen whenever I do put it up there. But I think this is number 39. Um, So I was off last week because I wasn't feeling good, as you guys saw in my Ready to Love video. I wasn't feeling good. <clears throat> but um, we're here this week nonetheless. So these are going to be the hot topics for the week of, what's this week? Damn, we only got like one more week of May. This is the week of May 16th through May 21st, you guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and discuss what's hot, what's trending this week, shall we? All right, you guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about a little bit of politics this week. We're going to delve into it. Especially because this bit of information comes from my state, Texas. So this happened late Wednesday afternoon, I believe it was, that I saw it. So our dumbass governor here, Governor Hot Wheels, you know, um, Greg Abbott. So he signed in. He signed a bill that, and it's it's, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting, it's disgusting, it's bothersome to me. So he signed a bill into effect pertaining to women. You know, it just bothers me that men feel that they can police and tell a woman what to do with her body. That, that irritates me to no avail. So yeah, this bill, it is geared toward women and their reproductive organs. So it's a bill that will basically make it impossible for a woman to have an abortion at you know have an abortion the bill is once a woman you know at six weeks if a heartbeat is detected then you're not you, you can't get an you can't get an abortion so to speak and six weeks i mean that's around the time most women find out that they're pregnant so it's been you know it's this whole argument with the with the pro life people you're not pro-life you're just pro-birth because once the baby is born you can give a fat fuck about what happens to that child after they're born look at you know the um look at the popular i mean look at you know kids in the foster care system and and how they're mistreated like i've told you guys i knew some kids that were in foster care and their foster families did not treat them well treated them like shit those kids, you know, I couldn't do anything because I was a kid myself, but those kids were just completely mistreated and, and, and just, they were mistreated. And the thing was, they were foster kids, but the people that fostered them had their own biological children. They treated their biological children so much better than the foster kids. Like when you would see the, the biological children around they would be dressed so nicely, hair done, nice clothes and shoes, but then you got the foster kids in these ran down, you know, now I can't even say gently worn clothes. They were worn out clothing, terrible shoes and everything, but your kids look better than your foster kids. But you're getting money every month to take care of these kids and you, you put more focus on more focus and emphasis on your kids so that's my issue when it comes to it they say oh you know they want to they, they're all about the baby while it's in the mother's womb but once the baby is born you can give a damn about it and then you have people who have children that know that they don't want to be parents but they don't either don't want to deal with the stigma of having an abortion from either the church or members of the church they don't want to deal with that stigma so they give birth to these kids and then they abuse them and mistreat them and it's just like yeah so many other options and like i said you could you could you know have someone adopt them foster them someone who's going to love them that is one that is the main thing someone is going to you know truly love the child but it's just like really and then i see people with the argument of you know, wear a condom, you know, use conscious, uh, use birth control when you have sex. Y you idiots do realize that birth control is not a condom. That doesn't, 
that's not 100%. You can have defective condoms. You can have a defective condom. You can, I mean, certain times, I mean, women. I don't know how many times this happens. It's not something that I would personally do, but I know this happens quite often where a man is having sex with a woman, he might have a condom on and boom, the condom burst and what does he do? Continue to go at it. You're not protected anymore. So the woman doesn't then, but I mean, when you, I, I, now me personally, I don't, again, like I said, I don't know anything about that. So I don't know the difference between what it feels like, you know, having sex with someone with a condom on versus no condom. I don't know what that feels like, you know, receiving. Don't know nothing about that. But like I said, condoms are not 100% effective. Like I said, you know, they could, be, you could, you could get a defective condom. Now, what if, what happens if a woman gets a defective condom, her or her man has a defective condom and they get pregnant and they weren't trying to get pregnant and they'd be like, oh shit, we can't get an abortion because of this damn dumbass bill. Birth control, like I said, not 100% effective either. Like, so for people with that whole argument that use birth control, use a condom, the fuck? And then, you know, you, you, um, you always want them people, you know, when you throw out the statistic to them, what about a woman that gets raped? Is she supposed to carry that child? No. If she doesn't want, like, who wants that? Who wants, I mean, no woman wants to have to look at something that was so painful to them. But then people say, oh, the pro-lifers, they be like, oh, you know, the statistic of that happening is very um, low. And then even when you go in, they do the rape kit and they do it, you know, they do all the tests. If it just freshly happened, she's not going to automatically be pregnant. You do realize it's a dumb fuck. She's not going to be just, oh, he just raped her. And now she's pregnant. That takes some time. That, that's not immediate. It's just, it's. It's asinine to me. It's stupid. You guys can disagree with me or agree with me, but I just think it's wrong. For, for me, I just think it's wrong. Do I agree with abortion? Not 100%. I don't, I mean, I don't agree with it because, like I said, there are many other avenues that you could do. Like, and I'm speaking for myself because, me personally, my, my birth mother could have had an abortion with me, but she chose not to. But, you know, and I've had m moments in my life where I have said that I wish she had of just because of the tension, well, the friction with she and I, but I don't think that anymore. Um, but she did not give, you know, she gave me, she kept me in my family. She gave me to an aunt that loved me and raised me. So there are so many, uh, so there are so many options that you could have. So definitely so many options that you could do you could give the baby to someone in your family you could give the baby up for adoption there are so many different avenues but you know i respect whatever anybody chooses like i've said on this channel plenty of times before um my best friend she did that she had an abortion and she didn't want to tell me at first because she didn't want me to judge her and i told her like i'm not gonna judge you like I'm not perfect like and I told her you know because she didn't like I said she didn't want to tell me at first and I was like I'm not gonna judge you you're my best friend I love you nothing that you could do could ever make me look at you any differently and I, I told her I'm like nothing you could do can make me love you any less or look at you any differently like I'm like and I told her at the time I'm like because we talked about it we talked about it for weeks before she actually went in and had the abortion we talked about it I was like you know make this decision for you but I told and we were in our early 20s at this time I told her make the decision that's best for you don't worry about anybody else and I said if you decide to get the abortion I got your back no matter what I got your back I'm always gonna have your back and then I told him like if you decide to if you decide to go through with the pregnancy I got your back I'm like we both broke together but I'm always I'm always in your corner like I got you I don't care what nobody I, I, I got you I got you like I told her that I'm like if you because she she was going back and forth I'm like, I'm like if you whatever you want is what I want I want what you want I want what's best for you if you decide hey let's do it I'm in your corner I'm gonna I'm help you you know you, you need a village and I will be that village for you and so yeah so I mean it is what it is 
I just don't agree with men in politics getting involved. I don't agree with men getting involved. And I don't agree with politics getting, you know, them getting involved. That, that, that doesn't make sense to me. So, and you know, people are talking about it's always, it's, you know, and then people come with the statistic that more black women have abortions than any other race. Not true. Y'all do know that white women have abortions as well. The difference between white women and black women, black women don't have private doctors that they can go to. White women do. And then people come with this stigma of Planned Parenthood. Everybody wants to say, oh, Planned Parenthood. You go there to get an abortion. You do know that there are so many other things that you can go to Planned Parenthood for, right? Planned Parenthood can give you birth control. Planned Parenthood can give you condoms. Planned Parenthood can give, you know, do testing for you. You know that, right? There are a lot more things that Planned Parenthood does, but the, these pro-lifers want to focus on abortions. That's not all that they do. Like, there's a clinic, there's a Planned Parenthood clinic by one of my old jobs. Every morning that I would go to work, I would see those idiots outside of the Planned Parenthood before they opened protesting with their, you know, their, their signs. And, I, and I'm just, and I, I actually let my window down one morning and said, you guys look stupid. And they looked at me like I was crazy. I said, you guys, I, I let my window down. I told them, you guys look stupid because you do know that there are more things that Planned Parenthood do besides giving an abortion. But I said, you guys look really idiot. You guys look really stupid. Just keeping it real with you. You look dumb as fuck. And it was a bunch of... And I, it, it was more of them and none of these. But yeah, you guys, that's it. Um, let me know what you guys think about that. Do you guys think that... And it's interesting to me. The same people who were bitching, moaning, and complaining about, um, the same people who are bitching, moaning, and complaining about, you know, my body, my choice when it comes to a mask, you don't feel that same way about a woman, her body, her womb, make it make sense. But let's move on. All right, you guys, next, let's, um, extend a little bit of a rest in peace. So I think this also came out Wednesday as well. Um, comedian legend Paul Mooney, he passed away. Let me see. If he I didn't realize Paul Mooney was as old as he was. He was 79 years old. But I guess I should have realized he was that age because my mom knew who Paul Mooney was. And my mom was, my mom was born. My mom would be 81 if she were alive today. She would be 80 years old. And on her birthday, she would have been turning 81. So Paul Mooney is 79 and he was 79 years old. Yeah, he was 79 years old, so that means he was born in 1941. Let me see if they, did they say, did they give a cause of death? Did they say it was a heart attack? Child, I can't pronounce that. M Y O C. I'm gonna assume that's a heart attack. But yeah, Paul Mooney passed away on Wednesday, age of 79. The cause of death. Micardo, my myocardial. Inf I don't know what that is, but. He, I, must, I think he did. I think I, I think I did hear that it was a heart attack that they had that he had. So definitely a rest in peace to you know the legend that is Paul Mooney. Again, like I said, I just didn't realize he was that old. But I mean, seventy nine is not old. But yeah, rest in peace to Paul Mooney. Um, let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, let's talk about a little bit of reality shows that are coming up down that pipe. So one of them I will be reviewing and one of them I will just be watching for the enjoyment. So the one that I'll be watching for the enjoyment is going to be a show with Tiana Taylor and Iman Shrumpert. I absolutely love both of them. I did watch their reality show that they had. I believe it was on BH1 a few years ago. Love that show. 
Tiana and Iman. I like that show. Um, I'm going I'm to watch this show. I, 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 like I said, I, I love both of them together. I do see them when they're on social media. Beautiful couple, beautiful family. The star of that family happens to be Baby Junie. <laughs> That little girl, she, because I, I think, uh, like, what was it, last week, Tiana was like, you look at y'all's niece when she was on social media, cute little girl. Cutest thing, cutest little thing. So, yeah, I'm here for it. Let me know if you guys will be watching that show. Now, the show that I will be reviewing is going to be on BT, and it'll be on June the 9th. So, it'll be the same night that Sisters returns to BT. so I, you guys know. I'll be reviewing Sisters as well. So I'll be doing Sisters and this show is, I think it's titled BET Presents The Encore. Now this show is produced by Carlos King, who, you know, who's given us the likes of um, Hollywood Divas. He's given us The Next 15, which I never watched that show. Um, the Next 15, I believe that's the name of that show. You know, he's given us Bell Collective. He's given us um, Behind Every Man on OWN. He's given us Love and Marriage Huntsville. And now we'll have this show. Um, so this show will follow, rea you know, not reality stars, girls, you know, singers from girl groups of the 90s and the 2000s. Um... So you guys remember the clip that surfaced on on YouTube or Twitter or, or Instagram a few a few years ago of luggage, aka Farah from Destiny's Child, and Keely Williams from 3LW that surfaced, and everybody at that time was like, "Oh my God, why did this show never happen?" Especially when Farah was in that interview saying, "Say my name, say my name. oh my God, I can never get over Beyonce and her with that luggage comment." I can never get over that. <laughs> I never get over that. It's hilarious to me. But um, where we at? But um, bum, 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 bum. where we at? Where am I? At? What was I talking about? I'm talking about this show. Okay. I do. A, I get off track a lot of times, you guys. Sorry. So yeah, this show is gonna follow girl. Um, they're gonna put the singers together in the house. They're going to have an in-house studio. They're going to work together to be a super group, I guess you would say. I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know how this is going to work. So it's giving me a feel of, you know, it's giving me a feel of making the band pop stars. If you guys ever watched that show back in the 2000s, that was my show. You had Eden's Crush. You had Scene 23, then with Making a Band, you had Old Town. I did not watch their season. You had Old Town, then you had The Band, and then you had Danny D. Kane, then you had Day 26, and um, what was the, what was the white dude's name? Was it Donnie? I think it was Donnie. What, speaking of Making a Band, isn't there supposed to be a new remake of Making a Band? We'll see when that comes out. But yeah, this show, they're putting the ladies in the house. God, it's for me, it's going to be Keely. I'm not the biggest fan of Keely. You know, I, I, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. I, was, I loved 3LW back when they you know, first came out. But then after they after Naturi left and they replaced her with that other girl whose name <clears throat> escapes me all the time, that's when I stopped listening to them. And then, you know, when Keely... Naturi, not Ke not Naturi, Keely, Adrian, Sabrina, Bryant, and Raven Simone, when they came together as the Cheetah Girls, when they came together as the Cheetah Girls, I was here for that. But then when Raven left, I was out again. And it always, it's always Keely and Adrian. I'll give it. It's always, but most of always Keely. But yeah, they're putting Keely together. They're doing some two of the girl, two of the sisters from Cherish, um, Shamari DeVoe, um, Pam from Seven O Two, Nivea, which she wasn't in a girl group; she was a solo singer. I'm 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 interested to see how this is gonna work out. 
really interested to see. But like I said, I'm, I'm definitely going to be reviewing it. I think it's a 10 episode series so far. We'll see how this goes. I feel like it's going to be a hot mess. But yeah, let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Next up, I think we will discuss... Lord, I don't want to, but let's talk about T.I. and Tiny. With T.I. and Tiny, things just keep going from bad to worse with these two. Now, you know, they got all those ladies in Atlanta and I believe Florida, you know, alleging, you know, being drugged and sexually assaulted. <sighs> Now, there was a case out there in Vegas. That case has since been closed. But now there's a new case in L.A. And TMZ, you know, obtained the, the, the you know, the police report that from the lady. So this incident happened, and I'm going to say allegedly, this incident happened in 2005 in California, in L.A. So they were all at a club. T.I., Tiny, and this young lady were at a club. And, you know, the young lady said she had been drinking throughout the night. And then she said that, you know, Tian Tiny gave her a drink. And allegedly this drink might have been, you know, allegedly this drink was spiked. So she says that she and some other women went back to their hotel room. But as the night progressed, it just soon turned into she, T.I. and Tiny in the room together. So they told her, let's go take a shower together. So... They went and took a shower together, and then after they got out the shower, they went back to the bed, and T.I. wanted the woman to oil him down, which she says, you know, they did that, and then soon Tiny joined him, and then at that point, she says T.I. came up behind her and put his toe in her vagina. Ugh. Ugh. Why would you put your toe in someone's body part? Like, it's a kink. Maybe it's a kink for some. I just don't understand that. But, you know, so that happened. And then I know she said that she went to the bathroom and threw up and she blacked out. And, <clears throat> you know, she didn't come to until the next morning where she said that she had a was it a tingling sensation or she had a tingling sensation and the, and some pain in her vagina Jesus Christ like that would beg the question of what the hell happened for one, for her to be sore and have a tingling tingling sensation in her vagina Yeah, like I said, the story with these two, it just keeps going from bad to worse. It's just when you think it's kind of, when you think you've heard the worst of it, then more comes out. Um, I, I wonder, you know, with this one, are there statute of limitations on this? Because 2005... Hmm. I just wonder if there's statute of limitations on that. Well, I guess not, because I mean, look at Bill Cosby. Hmm. I mean, for me, the moral of the story is one, don't drug people. That's number one. And sex, like, how do you how do you have sex with a person that is incapacitated like I don't understand how anyone can get a thrill out of that like how do you have sex with a person that's just just laying there either they might be still or if they're not lucid enough what kind of enjoyment do you get from that like I, I don't understand it. Like, I don't understand people who rape people. I don't understand what enjoyment you can get from raping someone. I don't get it. Really, no. 
I'm still just confused about the fact that the fact that she woke up with her vagina sore and she had that tingling sensation. What did you guys do to her? I don't want to know, but I'm just saying that's a rhetorical question, actually. Like, you shouldn't be sore after having sex. And then, like I said, the woman blacked out. Why are you having sex with someone that is passed out? Like, I don't get it, but yeah. Like I said, things keep going from bad to worse with Tian Tiny, but I will continue to follow the story. Like I said, it just gets worse. Especially when I was reading it, I was like, wow. It went from his toe in her vagina to her waking, to her throwing up and then passing out and then waking up the next morning in pain. Ugh. But let's move on. All right, you guys, next, let's talk about the BT Awards. So the BT Awards, they will be held this year at the Microsoft Center in um, Microsoft Theater out there in California, LA. So this year, we're going back to what we normally have. You guys remember last year's BT Awards, which was hosted by Amanda Seals. That, sim that was um, virtually done and it was, I had, you know, I enjoyed last year's BET Awards, even, you know, even even, um, even amidst a pandemic, I think they did a, a fantastic job with the BT Awards. And it ended on time, which is something that the BT Awards very rarely does, especially when it's live. So this year we're going back live. And also this year what they're doing is they will have an audience there. Now with the audience, this audience will consist of individuals who are fully vaccinated. So it's, it feels like, you know, it's like they're coaching, you know, they're, they're um, cold. Man, I guess you could say coercing people say, saying, hey, or bribing people like, hey, you get that vaccine, you can come be in the audience at the BET Awards. Now me personally, they, I, I, I'm already fully vaccinated. I got my um, second vaccination shot, second vaccination shot on May second, which was actually my brother's birthday. But I got my second dose on May second. I feel fine. Now I know that people still are very reluctant to get the vaccine, and me on this channel, I'm not here to tell people what to do. I will just give you guys my personal experience with the vaccine. I feel fine. You know after getting the first and second dose only thing that i had after the first dose and the second dose was a sore arm that was it nothing else my arm was just sore now the first time my arm was sore i got my first shot on a sun on, on a sunday my arm didn't start getting sore until late sunday afternoon but that's also because i slept i came home and took a nap and i slept on it unfortunately so it stayed sore for a few days but the last shot that I got, I came home, I cooked, I watched the reunion of the Real Housewives of Atlanta and Marriage and Medicine, and I, you know, I did my reviews and then I went to sleep, and I woke up Monday morning with a sore arm, and it just lasted that whole day. That was it. It was just that Monday and then Tuesday I was back to feeling like myself. But once again, like I said, I'm not, you know, I'm not coming here to tell you guys to get the vaccine. I'm just giving you guys my personal experience. And, um, but yeah, I mean, BT, like I said, if you want to be a part of the audience, they want people to be fully vaccinated. But then too, with that one, that comes with its own set of issues, so to speak. Because you guys know that people are selling fake vaccine cards. So how will you know if a person is truly truly vaccinated like are you gonna call the location i'm gonna have to look at my vaccine card because it tells you with my vaccine card it just tells you it tells you so i got vaccinated at my local walmart it just has my local walmart's number their store number 
So I guess if you wanted to um to verify that, I guess you can look in Walmart, you know, go to Walmart's system, go through their system and call their pharmacy, you know, call their call their 800 number of pharmacy. And I guess I guess that's something that you could do wherever like if they if they went to a CVS, a Walgreens, um a Walmart or even a hospital, I get but but even even with that one it doesn't wouldn't that violate hip that would violate HIPAA laws. That would violate HIPAA, right? Hmm. That would violate HIPAA. You know, I've always wondered about that. So I do wonder how how are they gonna how are they gonna vet that? Like how are they gonna vet people who actually got vaccinated versus people who bought a vaccination card off of eBay? the black market, how are you gonna how are you gonna validate that part? That's the interesting part. And I wonder if the performers are gonna be have to be fully vaccinated. They didn't say that. But I do that is the one thing that I just wonder. Vaccinated versus unvaccinated. And when I say unvaccinated, I mean individuals who may say, hey, I wanna go to the BET Awards. Let me, you know, get a vaccine card and present it to them. Or I wonder will they do what well, they can't do that because you have to wait between your doses. So that's gonna be interesting. We'll see how that works out. We'll see. Oh, and also, if you guys do want to um, go, to, you know, if you want to be in, a, if you're vaccinated, fully vaccinated, and would like to attend the BT Awards on May 27th, which I think is going to be a Thursday. Actually, it's next week. To be exact, next third. I'm I'm pretty positive it's next Thursday because the 28th happens to be my ex's birthday, and our birthdays are always on the same day every year. Yep, it's next Thursday. So next Thursday, you guys can go online and register, you know, to be a part of the audience if you want to be. Um, but yeah, that's really it for the BT Awards. Like I said, the BT Awards will air on BT on Sunday, June the 27th. Will you guys be watching? I will be watching and giving my recap after the award show. They have not announced who the host is this year. That's really, or have they announced who the host is? See, May is almost over, and by this time, we already know who the host is. We've already saw the commercials that they are going to roll out for the B. You know, the BT awards are not like they used to be when, when um, I was in my teens and early 20s. When they first started the BT Awards, the promotion is not the same as it. It's just not the same anymore, but I'll definitely be watching it. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, and then the next story to talk about is going to be Billy Porter. Um, Now, you guys know I review polls, and actually, this past Sunday's episode was centered around his character, Pray Tell and him going home to inform his family that you know he he um had full-blown aids at this point so i don't know when he did this interview i know it was sometime this week but billy porter has come out and revealed to everyone that he is hiv positive and he, he's known that for the last 14 years of his life so he found out in june of 2007 which um he found out, you know, it was a bad year for him. I think he said he had filed for bankruptcy in that year. He had also found out that he had type 2 diabetes as well. So, finding out, you know, damn, that is, a t that is hard. Find out you have type 2 diabetes, you file for bankruptcy, and then, the, you know, finding out that you have HIV. So, he hadn't told anyone because of shame and, you know, shame. And... I guess for him, the thing was, you know, he came from the school of people who didn't really know much about HIV and AIDS and, you know, like with um, polls, which is in, which takes place in the 90s, you know, people then were ignorant to a lot of things, how you could get HIV and AIDS. You know, most people thought people were still thinking at that time it was transferred by blood. Well, it is blood and semen, but you know, people thinking that if you prick yourself that you can catch it with one, you know, 
we all know that it's a, not an airborne disease. I guess I should have said that. People believe that it was airborne, which it wasn't. But by 2007, you know, modern science had come along and like I actually have friends who are HIV positive, been that way for years and, you know, live normal, happy, healthy lives. But I guess for him, like I said, he he came he was, you know, old enough in 2007 that he had been through the AIDS epidemic, saw people dying that he would have he would have thought that, you know, he should have been a little bit more safer, I guess you would say. But I mean, you live and you learn, you know, everything in life is a learning lesson. I always say that good, bad or indifferent, everything in your life, you can if you, you can live if you live through it, then it, it you know, you can learn something from it. And, it's, you know, I'm not happy that he has HIV or anything, but he can be he could definitely be a sounding board for, you know, especially younger fans who watch this show. He, you know, he could be a sounding board for people. He could be an advocate, definitely. Um, I know he also, you know, was, you know, about the church. Like in Sunday's episode, you know, people in the church feel like that if you get, a, you know, as a gay person or some gay bisexual person, that if you contracted that, that is a punishment from God, which, no, it's not that. But, you know, like I said, um... With the advances in modern science, you can go undetectable and you can live a normal, happy, healthy life. <clears throat> now, I know people still are, there are some ignorant people still out there, you'll see it, or people say that they don't want to date someone that has, you know, HIV, that's HIV positive. But if you look on the commercials, like if you look on commercial, there's a lot of commercials geared toward this one because uh, um i watch date when i watch daytime television <clears throat> daytime television or any television in general like the actress who plays lulu on pose she's actually in a commercial for a step up prep up so it's this this drug called prep that someone who is not hiv positive they can take if they have a partner that is hiv positive so prep it it reduces the risk for a person who is not HIV positive of getting HIV. If, like I said, if their partner has is HIV positive, positive, and they have to. I think the person has to be positive and undetectable. I think that's what it is. They have to be undetectable, or the the viral load is so low that you know it can't be detected by a lab test. And that is actually the wording from one of the commercials that I saw. So yeah, you know, like I said, people still have that ignorance about not wanting to be with someone that in fact has HIV when, like I said, science has come so far to where you can have a normal, happy, you know, a normal, healthy sexual relationship with someone who's HIV positive. But, you know, like I said, um, I'm glad that he felt comfortable now coming out with this. Because it could be helpful for some for someone out there who may have just gotten a diagnosis and, you know, they feel this shame, they feel this stigma that, damn, I have HIV and no one's going to want to be. Actually, I saw a Twitter post about that yesterday. A guy that I follow, he was talking about one of his exes, you know, they had talked about having sex the first time that they were going to have sex. And then when he got there, you know, he was so nervous to even tell him that he had HIV because so many people have left him because when he comes out as HIV positive, they run away from him, which is still stupid to me. But this guy, he said he, you know, he said it didn't bother him, which it shouldn't bother you. It really shouldn't. It really shouldn't. And I think that might be another thing in within the community. People still have that, that stigma. So, you know, because there are so many people who either don't know that they have it or they do have it and they don't tell their partners so that way they can you know get informed about the way to have sex with someone who is HIV positive 
but yeah you guys that is you know um like i said once before, once again i am happy that billy you know had the strength and the courage to come out and say that he has hiv i'm not happy that he has it but i am happy that he you know let go of you know any pain trauma that he may have felt and openly admitted it um but yeah you guys let's move on to the last story All right, and then lastly, let's talk about Naomi Campbell. You know, I hadn't really heard anything from Naomi Campbell since we saw her last year at the airport in that hazmat suit. So Naomi Campbell showed a picture of her earlier this week. It was a picture of a baby's feet. So Naomi Campbell is the mother to a new baby girl. So congratulations go out to Naomi Campbell. Now, people are wondering if Naomi Campbell, you know, had a, you know, she, if she gave birth to the baby, did she have a surrogate or did she adopt? I don't think it's, if, I mean, to me personally, it doesn't make a big difference. All right, you guys. Um, so with Naomi Campbell, it doesn't matter if she had a baby you know, if she gave birth, she had a surrogate, if she adopted. At the end of the day, the child is hers. Like, my mother, she was 49 years old when I was born. And I'm not, I wasn't biologically her child, but that did not take away from the fact that she was my mother in every sense of the word. She loved me from the minute she laid eyes on me. Like she told me to, actually she told me the story. She was not there when I was born. She wasn't there when I was born. She was at work, but after she got off work, she immediately came to the hospital where me and my birth mother were. And <laughs> she told the story that, you know, I don't, I don't know if my family watches, I don't know if they found me on YouTube or not, but I mean, this is my mother's story and I'm, I'm going to tell it, it's her story that she told and I'm gonna tell it like I have no shame in telling this story so she said she came into the room where me and my mother were and my older brother now we we're we're he's you know he's older than me obviously but I was in the little you know the little crib little the little crib and I was crying and my birth mother was on the side of me sleep and like I said, my mom came in and she said she picked me up and I stopped crying. I guess I knew that that was my mother. I mean, I guess I knew, that, you know, despite the fact that my biological mother was on the side of me, I guess when my mom came in, I knew immediately she was my mother because she said I, she picked me up and she called me. So she had a few pet names for me. Ugh. One of them we are never going to mention, ever. But one of them, she, 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 one of them she called me was Mama's baby. So she called me Mama's baby. So she picked me up and she, that's what she called me, Mama's baby. And you know, she said I just stopped crying at that point. So yeah, suffice it to say, it does not matter if she gave birth to her daughter, if she adopted her daughter, or if she had a surrogate. At the end of the day, the child is hers. And that child is going to be loved so that's what the most important thing is a child knowing that they are loved by their parents and wanted by their parents but you guys that is going to wrap it up for the this week's hottest topics um we do this every week we try to do this the same time we do this the same place and um i hope you guys have a great weekend i'm actually going to be heading to Houston this weekend. I don't know if I'm leaving tonight or tomorrow, but I'm definitely heading to Houston this weekend. Um, what else? Stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your mask or not. Whatever, Whichever choice you make, just make a safe one. Just be safe. And be blessed, you guys. And I'll see you guys later on for Ready to Love. All right, you good. Oh shit, my bad, y'all. I miss burping y'all face. All right, you guys, that's it. I'll see you guys later. Um, also, you guys, I need to start saying this more. Follow me on social media, you guys. Uh, I would, you know, 
follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Those are the same as my YouTube. Only thing with Twitter is is JB says what one. My Snapchat, that information is always in the description bar below, as well as my email if you guys ever want to just email me, talk to me, have any kind of conversation with me. Email me. You guys can DM me on Twitter, Instagram, which are one I respond everywhere. But until then, you guys, to the next video, you guys, I will see you guys later. Bye.